125 laps would complete this race. 72 on the board. Andy Santerra sitting there in second place. Now, we haven't seen him much this year. I think this is only a second race. And uh, he's, you know, he's a good short track racer, too. Boy, that flag is right out straight in the wind. Yeah, Santerra from Cherryfield, Maine, with and, a new deal this year. And there's a lot of guys that are good short track racers, half mile, five eighths mile track racers that really don't like super speedways, don't like to go 190 mile an hour. Andy probably falls into that category. Santerra is making only his second start of the season. David Green trying to get back up here by Spencer and see if he can't get that lap back because he had a fast car. I don't know what he did. had trouble, problems in the pit. All right, 73 laps complete this time. Let's go back under Green. Jimmy Spencer, Andy Santerra, Chad Chapman, Brad Baker, Michael Waltrip, and then Kevin Harvin. Spencer gets a good start. It's the Santerra. See Kevin Harvick in the two car. He's the, the first car out there that's he's running in six right now, fifth now, that pitted a while ago. He's trying to get underneath the uh, 25 car, Chad Chapin, 17 car, Matt Kenson following him through there, trying to get him trapped on the high side. Now pitting in was a good move, Larry, because those guys are already back up in the top five with four fresh tires. So obviously a good good time to pit. You see the damage on Chad Chapin's car from that first incident of the day. We're going to get a battle for the lead here, it looks like. Andy said, tearing that old one car. He's wanting that lead right now. Pulls to the inside of Jimmy Spencer down the back. Hard to make that pass. With the trouble turn one. Eleven cars are piled up in the first corner. And our champion's up in the middle of them. Hamilton Jr., Mike McLaughlin is there, Shane Hall, Jeff Green, Jeff Mike Green's Diller, car, yeah. Kevin Grubb, and the 36 of Hank Parker. Green's car is wiped out. I saw two of our top five in points in that wreck. Of course, Jeff Green, who's leading the points of the 20 car, Mike McLaughlin, he was in fifth in points. Look, look at this. Is Believe it or not, this is Bobby Hamilton Jr.'s car. I don't Jr. know who car. that is. It's Hamilton. <laughs> Or what's left of it? That looks like that looks like a Dr. Pepper candy got squished. Oh, that one's already been to the recycling center. Oh, uh, they'll get that sheet metal pulled off there. They'll make sure them tires are straight. They'll get back out there. There may be a few laps down. That thing's got <laughs> Bristol road all over. It. Half the field has been involved in one or more cautions. Jay Sauter won't be around for this restart for pushing his car down pit road. Andy Santer from Maine, graduate of the Bush North Series, is your leader. He has Jimmy Spencer right behind him and Michael Waltrip. David Green, that 34 car, trying to get his lap back. He's going to get shuffled back to the third position, though. A couple of raindrops on the glass. And the reason Michael Waltrip, the 99 car, is up here, just remember, wasn't that long ago, he was at the back of the field. Remember, he pitted under the caution before all the leaders pitted, stayed out on that last caution when everybody pitted, he ended up in third position. Yeah, but his car's not very good, and he's getting passed by most all the guys that have already pitted, so uh, he's, he's still not in very good shape. You're riding oh, with Kevin Harvick as Newman went way up the racetrack, or rather, you're riding with Kenny Wallace there. All the time. Spin in turn one, Christian Elder has gone around, and Elton Sawyer has spun. Caution is out this time. Sawyer spun off turn two. It was two separate incidents. Well, Santerra's got a terrific race car, as is evidenced by the fact that he's leading this thing, but he had a terrible time trial, qualified 29th, and that meant he had to pit out in the backstretch. So I asked Stan Meserve, his crew chief this morning, what are you going to do to try to win the race? Meserve's plan, stay out long, maybe longer than anybody else. Pit late, pit later than anybody else, and then maybe take just two tires and see how it works. He said he's got no other choice. It's the only way he can win the race, so that's what they're doing. To Jeannie Zalasko. Well, Dick, it sounds like similar strategy for the one car as well. Jimmy Spencer, they've been getting some great gas mileage out of all of these cautions, so they're just trying to stay out as long as they can. They were thinking about coming and pitting now, and they said, nope, there's a threat of rain. Let's stay out here. Let's keep working it. We're extending this caution. Now, Mike Dillon is going to be taken to a local hospital for precautionary x-rays, and as this track does not have a tunnel, he exits at the crossover at turn three. So we're under yellow at lap 104. Andy Santer leading Jimmy Spencer, Kevin Harvick, and Matt Kenseth. Andy Santer from Maine, who owns one Bush Grand National victory, is going to lead them down for the restart in the Cheez-It 250. Here we go. Green flag. No 
Sawyer tried to get a jump on him, realized he was going before the leader and had to slow down. And he gets a back out in front and Elton Sawyer's got a good race car. He just got turned around down here by then. Give Santer a little breathing room to Jimmy Spencer. He's the rock between a couple of hard places right now. <laughs> Here comes Kevin Harvick, though. Yep. Got those four fresh tires in that two car right there in third position right now. Want to get back to the front before this weather might move in. Matt Kenseth in the 17 car right there behind him in fourth position. Oh, headache, man. Jimmy Johnson's running the fifth there, guys. He's got a pretty good-looking hot rod, too. Michael Walter sixth. Ty Bodine, seventh. Kenny Wallace, eighth. The 92 car, that's actually a back. Car. He crashed his primary car right out of the truck yesterday, Dick Berber. Well, we just heard from Jimmy Johnson. We thought at first he was telling his crew that he's sick in the car. We were afraid he was going to have to leave. What he was really saying is he's sick of all the caution flags. He's got a good race car, and he wants to stay up green. Well, we agree. Yeah, we're sick of him, too. <laughs> usually takes about, I don't know, 50, 60 laps to sort everything out. There's 43 cars on this half-mile racetrack. That's too many cars for this little racetrack. So you got to eliminate some of them so you get some room to race. And now it looks like we've got a little room to race. There's a couple like Greg Bickle limping around the inside, but for the most part, the field's got a little bit of room here. Right now, does Andy Santer and Jimmy Spencer pit? Jimmy Spencer is coming to pit road. I mean, we're we're almost halfway through this thing. He's on pit road, and we're going to have one to go. So these guys are going to have to hustle. Jeannie. Well, the one car comes in with a little problem with the transmission. They say they're going to be okay, but it's smoking just a little bit. So far, it's been running great. They told me they could go a 70-plus more laps if this caution wouldn't have come out. But they will take four tires, make a pressure adjustment, and fill her up as well. Gentlemen. We're no longer racing the rain, so it's safe for Spencer to give up that track position to come in, but now he's got a long way to go. Yeah, we got 21 cars on the lead lap. He's going from second to 21st here with just a little over halfway of this race to go. Sometimes it's good to be off sync. Sometimes it can put you in a little bit of a hole. Yeah, I'm sure that the old one was wanting to come in, but you got to remember, he's pitting on the back straightaway. Probably didn't have the chance. Afraid to take the chance. Matt, go to Matt. Oh, the problem for the old one of Andy Santer, they're having trouble with radio communication, so they're having to do the old hand signals like you did back in the 70s and 60s. They're going to try to go to halfway before they pin. Andy Santer leads Kevin Harvick on the restart. Boy, Harvick got to run off turn two right there. Remember, he's got those fairly four fresh tires. Puts up on the back of Santer right here off turn four. He wants that lead back. Santer's got a pretty good hot rod, though, to be able to hold those guys off. He, he hadn't been in the pits, and his car looks as good as anybody's out there right now. Dick mentioned his crew chief, Stan Meserve, who was one of the state of Maine's great drivers and actually ran Winston Cup in the early 70s in a Dodge. He's doing a great job right now because we know Kevin Hart has got a fast car. He Rick. hadn't, uh, I figured he'd blow right around Santer, but he hadn't. One thing it is happening, though, is that they're letting Matt Kitts has catch up with him. Greg Biffle, he's had to come back to the road, still trying to get repairs done on that car. He is. He's going behind the wall. He's just about, I think he's had it. Matt Kenseth is in the picture in this battle for the lead. Well, when this race started, uh, Larry and I said, you know, the winner will come out of those first four cars. Two of those four are right up there fighting for the lead right now. In fact, six of the last ten winners has been won from the top three starting position. Just shows you what starting up front's worth. When you look at the front cars there, they're not all beat up like these other cars are. They're in pretty good shape, not a mark on them. Of course, got a long way to go yet. Well, Harvick's there in the rocking chair between the other two leaders as we watch this fourth place battle. Todd Bodine slices inside of Jimmy Johnson. Actually, Santera's holding up these other two cars right now, which he should be. Uh, that's allowing some of these other cars like Todd to close up. We've completed halfway, so this race will be official today. Whether or not rain comes in. Actually, it's improved some. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Oh, that's not my job. I mean, that's Larry's job to predict the weather. <laughs> I would never uh, try to predict the weather to be. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're right. Randy LaJoy goes past Michael Waltrip. 
again think, struggles to keep his car down on the racetrack. I think Michael was pretty much riding on those new four, those four new tires he got there early. Once they go off, he's going to be in trouble. Here comes Jason Keller, started back in the 28th position. Keller he's going to take the position as well. Yeah. Talked to Jason Keller this morning, and uh, he said, look, we, we, we got a good race set up. We just need to work on our qualifying. Kevin Harvick still trying to get by Andy Sinter. Darrell, he's running the high line, or up a little higher than Kevin Harvick, right there in the middle of the quarter, and he's getting a good run off. This is Andy Sinter's crew. They want some rain right there. Hey, look at those quarter panels on that old one car and see what you see. Nothing. Nothing. And you know who's that's coming out of his pocket? And here he is leading the race. That's a big, big thrill for a guy like that. Santerra Reese Motorsports, new team formed this year to run a partial schedule. Andy got hurt at Daytona a couple of years ago and uh, took him a while to come back. He just decided he didn't like to run the bigger racetracks. He likes the smaller racetracks, and I admire him for that. He said, I just never felt comfortable there. Well, got caught behind Christian oh, Elder. Whoa. Man. He just barely got back in front of Kevin Harvick. But I tell you, Harvick, now that shows maturity. Yes. A year ago, Harvick would have nailed him because he would have not had the patience to let him in. Today, he knows he's got a better car. He knows he's got fresher tires. Let the cat in. For more, here's Steve. Hey, Daryl, interesting comment down here. Kevin Harvick radioed the crew, and he wanted to know who was driving the 01 car. He didn't know what to expect from him, so now he knows he's a significant racer. He'll give a little more respect, but surety, like you said. Yeah, well, don't feel bad. I heard the 01 call in. one though who was driving the two cars. <laughs> That's kind of how many new drivers are on the circuit nowadays. Let's show you that squeeze play getting around the lap car of Christian Elder. Harvick has a run here. Wow, that's, that's close. what you call give and take, and this is a give and take racetrack. There was no reason to force the issue. Give the guy a break. It'll pay off later on. Jeff Hammond. One of the things I'd like to talk about right now is the two guys that were sitting behind Andy Santer have a right to be patient. They know that before too long, the 01 car is going to have to come in, and if he has to come in under green, it's going to run his day. Look who's done moved into this picture right here, though, behind Matt Kenseth in that old double zero, that old buckshot car, Todd Bodine. He's done moved up here on these guys. And as many cautions as you have here early on, you do get into a, uh, into a run where there are no cautions, and you'll go for a long time through the middle of the race with no cautions. Todd Bodine in the double zero, he caught these guys in a hurry. Boy, Santeri shot out. That's him at the top of the screen. He has shot out to a great big lead, too. But, like you say, where's he going to go? <laughs> he's going to have to pit sooner or later. Work at the bottom. Uh, he's probably good for about 30 more laps, uh, maybe a few more, but about 30 more laps. I'm not sure Bodine is going to be as patient. He never has been. He caught these boys in the hurry, but see, Matt Kitts is in the 17. They're right around the bottom there, and it's hard to pass on the high side here. He'll let him go right here. Got to let him go. We'll see, Tom Olina wants to come practice after today's race on FX. Well, we're at 138 laps. We are past halfway. Andy Santerra continues to lead in the Cheez-It 250 at Bristol Motor Speedway. Kevin Harvick, who led the early laps, has fought his way back up to second. Ty Bodine is third, Matt Kenson fourth, Jimmy Johnson, Tim Fedewa, and Randy LaJoy. We'll be right back. Andy Santerra has just surrendered the lead to Kevin Harvick. Got a little high coming out of turn two, well, approaching a lap car, and yeah. Harvick took advantage. Kelly Dittner was there, and Santerra knew he had to go around him, but he had to go around him on the outside. Got up a little high off the two and opened the door. One other thing, guys, we need to worry about to talk about Andy Santera's situation is his crew have not run that many races this year. And again, from pitting on the back straightaway, even though he can keep that car for close to the uh, front, it's a situation where they got to get all off pit road. And Matt, I believe you have some more on that. The thing for Andy Santera, he knows he's got confidence in this over-the-wall group. This is actually Kenny Wallace's pit crew from the Winston Cup Series. But Stan Reserve is pretty say be very cautious take your time do it right we don't want to make any mistakes that will cost us they would like to pit around lap 160 to 165 but they think they might be able to stretch it to 180 they're still talking about it on the radio that's about 15 to 20 laps from now he 
has no choice but to run the thing out of gas right. because if he pit under green, you're going to lose two laps. So he's kind of in a box right now. But Jimmy Johnson right there in the 92 car, he was running fifth. Randall Joy in the seven went by him right there, kicked him up, and Tim Fiddle in the 66 car took the position, kicked him all the way back to seventh position. For more on Jimmy Johnson, here's Dick. Jimmy Johnson's dropping back. The car is tight. They just told him when he comes in to take the next set of tires, they'll fix it. Only two sets of tires allowed today under caution. Johnson's still got one more. He hopes that'll fix the car. Well, we've been caution free now for almost 50 miles. And I think the, the 150 sub lap tires on Andy Sinter are taking a toll right now. He just lost the third position to the 17 car, Matt Kinson. He did, Larry, but he's keeping those guys in check. And uh, the problem he's going to have at the end of the day, he's going to have a brand new set of tires laying in the pits. And that's, that's going to be a bad thing. But this says a lot. Yeah, it says a lot for Andy Sinter. It says a lot for that race car. But it says a lot for the tire that Goodyear has brought here. It's no longer a custom-made tire to the racetrack. It's a tire that's been run in four of the six races. So that says a lot for the tire they brought here. intermittent radio traffic back and forth between his crew chief staff and Zoom. He did say that the car is getting a little more loose up off the corners. He's just trying to hold on, and they will make a radio swap during their final pit stop coming up. Chances are, if he's having radio problems with his crew chief, a guy he's probably having radio problems with that's very important to him is his spotter up there. But the last thing you want to do is mess with the radio on a green flag pit stop. Right. Put the tires on it, stick some gas in it, get the thing out of the pits. Don't be doctoring around on the, with the If he gets four stuff. tires, he knows what he needs to do for the rest of the race. Right. Andy Santer hasn't won a Bush Series race since July of 1999, a four-tire stop. Talk to them, but he cannot hear what his crew is telling him. So a lot of hand signals as he was driving by. They're making the radio swap, sticking the radio in the car, peeling away one of the tearaways. There he goes. Andy's down and away. He drops out the bad radio. He's back out of the track. If that radio wasn't bad, it is now. <laughs> That's exciting. That's exciting, bunch. Jeannie. Boy, speaking of bad guys, the double zero black flag for lug nuts. Two fell oh. off of that left front tire. He had to come back in. Well, these guys, they've had fast race cars all year long, but they've had more problems on pit road than you can imagine. This is a different crew, They guys. changed pit crew. This is his Winston Cup and, crew. Gosh. Gosh, is that Jeff Purvis's car or what's left of it? Back in the race, it is. Yes, yes it, it is. is. This, this is his Winston Cup crew right here. Yep. Well, we're under caution again, folks. Big surprise. Ninth one of the day at lap 166. We'll have more NASCAR Bush Racing on FX right after this. Welcome back to the Cheez It 250 on FX. On the restart, Kevin Harvick made a quick move, too quick for NASCAR officials to judge, and he is being given the black flag. I, I got to see this again. I'm not sure what happened. Let's see this and uh, see if we can figure out what happened. 98 is the tail end of the lead Here's lap. The Seven back is here. The leader. Seven's, the Seven's leader. a leader. You can pass to the right, can't pass to the left. If the green flag was out, DW, and I gotta believe that green flag had to be, we got trouble on the front straighter. Oh, Chad, Chad Chapman Chase. and Mike McLaughlin. McLaughlin back up into traffic, but everybody will get by. Now, Kevin Harvick was on pit road. He didn't stop in his pits now. He back on the racetrack. He wouldn't go a lap down there. Yeah, but I think he may have done a uh, cardinal sin and speeded out of pits. Matt Kenseth in second. Tim Fidoa up to third. What a great run he's had today. Now, how Randy LaJoy got this lead on that last caution when all the leaders pitted, got four tires. Randy LaJoy got two tires. He's pulled out here to about a five-car length lead. That's not bad strategy this late in the race. Track position, track position, track position. That's cool. <laughs> They also got in front of the race. Trouble turn oh, three. Man. Andy Santer got Santa turned Santa. around by Brad D. Oh, man. Oh. Oh, that looked like a bump em and dump em. I think that 75 has been involved in a couple of incidences today. David Green, Jay Sauter getting their lap back from the leader, Randy LaJoy, there in the uh, 34 and the 43 car. Boy, but the heartbreak is sitting right there in the turn. Look at this oh. poor guy. Leading the race. Everything going his way. 
He was coming back up through the pack. He made it back up to about 10th spot after his pit stop. Let's show you what happened. He's on the outside here of the 75 car. They just get together, getting down in a the turn there. 75's laps down. I think that back, he may not, I don't know if yep. it's a 75, I think he was one lap One down, lap down. Not laps Perhaps. down. Sure, Andy thought he'd probably give him a little room to get in there. Both of them hard into that outside wall mm. in turn three and four. Yeah, he backed that thing in there big time. Let's go back and talk a little about the, rest we'll have another angle and we'll talk a little about the restart and the penalty to Kevin Harvick for jumping that restart uh, on Randy LaJoy. There goes Santerre. And a shower of sparks. Well, that's unfortunate. Santer had a great car. Felt like he had a chance to win this race. Things worked out for him. Look from Hank Parker here. And again, you just kind of wait. You know those cars are going to come down the hill. They got it. They, this thing is banked so steeply that they just slide back down the track. But the question is when. The first car in the lead lap shall be the control car for restarting the race, and that's how the call was made against Kevin Harvick, who was in second at that time. We'll be right back.